Hello YouTube, the phenomenal Ringmaster Mike Groff, back here with a late night WWE Smackdown Live review. They were live in Cedar Falls, Iowa. They started off by some of the merch that I picked up, the AJ Styles red P1 gloves, yeah, like, kind of hard to figure out how he does it, but, hey, I think I got it right, yeah, and these gloves are pretty comfortable, a little bit pricey if, uh, you can't afford 20, they are 20 bucks, so it is pricey if you can't afford that, but, hey, they are nice, they are nicely put together, yeah, can do this, like he does uh, does when he does his entrance, and this is is a simulated vinyl with uh, your fabric on the other end, with AJ Styles Styles written on the uh, strap to secure it on your hand and around your wrist. Hey, nice, nice little glove. Plus, I also picked up the six dollar, six dollar uh, souvenir cup. Hey, had uh, some uh, Diet Mountain Dew inside it. So, hey, not a bad little thing, little keepsake. Plus, did pick up the yeah, get that damn thing out of here. The SmackDown Women's Championship is nice. Doesn't matter whether it's the SmackDown or Raw women's title. This thing is definitely a hundred times better than that piece of shit Divas Butterfly Championship. So, yeah. I'm glad WWE decided to bring back the women's championship. So, yeah. Women's wrestling, definitely back. So, fuck that Divas belt. <laughs> and moving on to some of the matches. First match of the card, we did have a triple threat tag team match. New Day, which was Big E and Kofi Kingston. Xavier Woods, still out with his knee injury. A sprained AC, I think it was an MCL that he had. We had Brizongo and the tag team champs, the Usos. Usos retained, which house show belt champions always retain, unless the champ champion is uh, going to be suspended the next day, or it's in one of those those uh, high unless it's in like New York or LA, and they're going to going to change the title title just to promote the live events but whatever it was still a decent match it was high it was, did have the aspects of entertainment you did have Kofi and uh, and uh, Fondango in like a little dance off you did have have uh Fondango do his hip rotation, and then Kofi uh, twerked in the ring, and eh, whatever, it was what it was. Then also, also Big E and Tyler Breeze did, the, did a spot where Big E would go up to the top rope, and Tyler Breeze would roll over to the other side of the ring. Big E would go up to the other corner, Tyler Breeze would roll back to the other side then he then Tyler Breeze would also roll over to the corner where the Usos were and that would that uh, bring in to where where one of the Usos would blind tag and it was a pretty entertaining match no and it did have some uh, some high flying spots and Usos win with kind of like a roll up. 
And we did have a six-man tag. Tag. We had Sami Zayn and the Hype Bros taking on the Ascension and Eric Rowan. Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn and the Hype Bros win, and the uh, Ascension got ticked off, grabbed the mic, and uh, issued an open challenge, which Luke Harper answered. He beat Connor of the Ascension with uh, with his uh, with his uh, clothesline. One, two, three. Quick little match. He did get a nice little pop after the victory, which was pretty cool. A little bit of was entertaining for, for what it was. We also had a uh, women's tag team, Natalia and uh, Natalia and uh, fuck. I'm having a little blank here. Excuse me. And yeah. Oh yeah, Natalia and Tamina taking on Charlotte and Naomi. I'm glad Rick. And uh, speaking of Charlotte, I'm glad Rick Flair is back back alive and well and one thing Charlotte and Naomi picked up the victory and one thing we did see Bobby Roode make his uh, Cedar Falls debut it was a pretty good match and uh, he was facing Dolph Ziggler and I did go in on Dolph Ziggler way too hard and yes I did piss off the mother that was sitting in front of me which basically a couple things that I said about Dolph Ziggler I called him a homosexual said he liked gay porn yeah the mother was pretty much uh, pissed off but whatever it's a sporting event and I just say glad she wasn't sitting around anybody who was actually drinking beer, beer during the show whatever Freedom of speech. Just so you know, the guy who did piss you off is a very unfamous YouTuber who's reviewing this event to over 400 subscribers. So we did have a triple threat match for the United States Championship. AJ Styles versus Nakamura versus Baron Corbin. Corbin did get a bunch of where's your briefcase chance and one of the things that that was pretty funny about it after Baron Corbin rolled out of the ring there was a guy in the front row who did buy the replica money in the bank briefcase and he uh, held it up in front of him taunting him with it and basically what else he did is he uh, held up the briefcase, picked up his cell phone, and got a selfie with the briefcase and Corbin in the background. So that was pretty funny. AJ Styles retained. This was a pretty good back and forth triple threat. AJ Styles did get, get Irish whipped into the guardrail, which, yeah, and one thing, that did, did look like it did hurt but whatever it's well because one thing it was a guardrail it wasn't the padded uh, barricades that they have for raw or smackdown so yeah yeah aj styles retained pretty good match and after the match like uh, aj styles did go around high-fiving and doing the be too sweet to uh, some of the fans and he also brought brought a uh, kid into the ring with him which was pretty fun pretty awesome pretty tremendous that AJ Styles did that he actually yeah clanked uh, the uh, toy clanked the belt with AJ Styles so hey glad that that little kid got to have a have a uh, WWE moment with uh, AJ Styles, so that was pretty cool. So we at, did have our main event, which was uh, Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal, last man standing match. Hey, and one thing, this was uh, pretty brutal. 
Like uh, we did have the use of the steel steps. We had a steel chair and and a kendo stick. We did have a table spot, which was pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, basically uh, they were gonna tease a superplex to the table, which would have been fucking badass. But still, still, uh, Randy Orton did a scoop slam. Grabbed, grabbed Jinder off the top rope, throw him through the table, which was pretty awesome. Whole crowd erupted at the scene, but yeah, like uh, but one thing, like uh, the, the Singh brothers did get involved, involved uh, at the end of the match by low blowing Randy Orton. The ref was uh, doing his count. And then uh, both the Singh brothers distracted the referee, and the other one got Jinder back to his uh, feet, which <coughs> Randy Orton was still down, and that's how Jinder retained the WWE Championship. Then afterwards, Jinder Mahal and the uh, Singh brothers ambushed Randy Orton, and then that which led to Randy Orton going on an RKO spree on both Singh Brothers and Jinder Mahal, which one little thing to send the crowd home happy, which was pretty good, and then Randy Orton did the uh went around the ring to uh yeah, sign autographs and also high five people. And, uh, I do say, like, this event was pretty tremendous. And one thing, uh, like, I did do kind of have a sore throat from the night, so it was pretty fun. Like, like, the live events are actually more fun, or, like, a little more fun than actual Raw and SmackDown, but, hey, I don't complain much with, uh, WWE, but... Whatever, like it was still fun to go to. Live events are fun if you. There's one in your area. I would suggest going to them. They they're fun. Uh, like uh, they're not as serious as the actual TV shows or pay-per-views. They're more exclusive to the live audience. So now it's the end of this review. Till next time. Peace the fuck out.